Hi there, this is Chris Henry, the Southern Gospel Gardener, and we are back with our second installment of Gardening with Chris Henry, I guess you could call this. And uh, today we're going to look at how to care for certain types of palm trees. We're going to look at taking care of a bench that's been weathered and rained on for a long time and just needs some TLC. We're also going to be talking about one of my favorite groups of all time, Greater Vision. So. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show, and maybe we can learn something together. Uh, as you can see, as it grows up, you can see these little parts where you cut off the major branches. Well, these get left behind, so what we want to do is clean these off and make the, the, the bottom of the tree look a little bit sharper. So you just start yanking on it. Like that, very brittle, comes right off. See what I mean? Very easy. Like I said, uh, this stuff comes right off. This stuff is very straight. Now, earlier I said we'd be talking about Greater Vision. Now, Greater Vision has been one of my favorite all time Southern Gospel groups. Gerald Wolfe started it. Uh, with Mark Trammell uh, back in the early 90s and uh, Chris Allman was, was with them then. Chris Allman left for a while, Jason Waldrop took over and that's when a lot of people really discovered Greater Vision and uh, Waldrop was with them for uh, well over a decade and uh, did a great job. He did fantastic songs like God Wants to Hear You Sing. Uh, that's probably his all-time favorite and uh, we do truly miss Jason. Uh, when he left, uh, a gentleman named Jacob Kitson came along and when he joined him, uh, he came from a group called Tribute Quartet. Now, Tribute Quartet was just a brand new group. And when they, uh, when they hit the scene, boy, they, they really had a great sound. Now, Jacob left Tribute, went to Greater Vision. And he was only there for a year. Um, I'll be honest with you. I love Jacob. I think he has a great voice. But it just didn't fit Greater Vision. And I think they both came to a mutual consensus that uh, they need to part ways for their sounds to be better. Now Jacob's got his own group right now. It sounds good. And of course, to my delight, Greater Vision went out and picked up Chris Allman. Chris Allman, the original tenor, is back with him today. And so we're going to talk a little bit about Chris Allman and Greater Vision and the, the latest album. Now they, they have an album that's going to be coming out soon, uh, which will probably be out May or June of uh, 2011. Uh, but for right now, we're going to talk about uh, the latest album, Welcome Back. I want to tell you about, um, it's called Freesia, F-R-E-S-I-A. Now this flower uh, blooms in the spring, and uh, it's a perennial, keeps on coming back. Now this one's yellow, um, there are some other ones that we have here in the yard that are going to be purple, there's other ones that are red, but these are the best, they smell the best. Just take a, take a whip, they smell as sweet as candy. If you can find these at your local stores, such as Lowe's or Orchard Hardware Supply, pick some up. You will not regret it. Every March, they grow up by themselves. They need a little water, and they will provide for you sweet-smelling flowers for up to three weeks. Some background on how I came to love Greater Vision. Uh, of course, I was always a great Cathedrals fan. Back in the 80s, when they had Mark Trammell, Danny Funderburk in their grant, and the group, what a great group that was. Hard to find a better group. Well, like I said earlier, in the early 90s, Greater Vision came together with Mark Trammell and Gerald Wolf, two great vocalists, Chris Allman. I didn't pay too much mind to it when they did join. I'm out here in California, and they never uh, ventured out here to the West Coast. However, a friend of mine by the name of Jack Black, a dearly departed friend, had a cassette in his car, and he started playing this cassette and I thought man who is this I asked him who is this he said oh it's Greater Vision it's that group with Gerald Wolf and Mark Trammell so I looked at the tape I thought this is great it was the you can have a song album it was only a table project he had gone back to National Quartet Convention picked it up brought it back and there was a song on there called Redemption Droth Nigh quite simply the greatest one of the greatest songs ever written and uh, one of the greatest songs ever recorded by Greater Vision fell in love with the song. They ended up re-recording this song on the uh, on their famous album, 
Far Beyond This Place. That was the album with My Name is Lazarus, and they record, recorded with the Budapest Philharmonic. And what a great rendition of that song. Re Redemption Draweth Nigh, they did it for the second time, and I always request it whenever they come into town. Uh, but that's how I came to love Greater Vision. I came to love Chris Allman's high tenor sound, especially on the Redemption Draweth Nigh. And so when he came back to the group, it really made an impact on their sound, especially live. They have a punch now that's just incredible. Now if you look over here, this is the Queen's Palm that we were looking at earlier. You look at this branch, it's starting to get some yellow on it. Um, and the reason for that is, that's typical for a Queen's Palm. That's how they grow up. They start to shoot up, they have these branches, these branches store the food, and then they uh, start to grow more fronds out of the middle and that's how it gets taller now you got to eliminate these to keep it clean looking and that's why it's so yellow it's got a lot of diseased spots on it it's getting to the point to where it's a detriment to the tree more than it is an asset to the tree so what you need is some good pruning shears like this you want to make sure that the edges are clean because palm trees uh, are susceptible to disease uh, when you cut off their branches that's when they can de develop a fungal infection so you want to trim these off you don't want to trim them off right here unless they're very large. Now in this case, we'll start off right up here. We'll take off just a piece of it for now. And then this is all that's left. Obviously you don't want to leave this. So you take, take it right here and cut it at an angle. And there you have it. You think, wow, there's not much left of it on this tree. But the taller tree, what you're wanting to do is make space for these new green fronds to spread out and really make it pretty. Here in the spring, it's the best time to cut these back. Now, this is uh, called a pygmy date palm. It's got very, very thin leaves. It's not like a queen's palm where it's fairly hardy under freezing temperatures. This plant, in fact, hates freezing temperatures. Uh, the, the plant that was here before was a little bit smaller and basically died because of freezing temperatures the previous winter. So we had to rip it out, which is no fun. If you've ever taken out a palm, it's absolutely no fun. So what you have to do is uh, check your weather. If the weather says, hey, it's going to get down below freezing tonight, you're going to need to cover it up because you don't want the dew to rest on the leaves and then for it to freeze. It will turn yellow. It will turn brown. You will lose your pygmy date palm. And that's definitely not what you want to do. So you take an old bed sheet. That's what I do. And I know what you're thinking. You used to sleep on something like this. I did. It's a long story. I'm not going to share it with you today. But if you'd like, you can ask me at the concert. What you have to do is uh, work with the wind. Of course, it's a nice, uh, you've got a nice little breeze. You've got to throw this over the queen's palm and make sure that all the fronds are covered. Usually the first attempt isn't quite successful, so you've got to pull the sheet over. greater vision I really like is the fact that they've got a great songwriter in the group and of course if you follow Southern Gospel you know who that is already Rodney Griffin I think he's won songwriter of the year 11 12 13 years in a row I'm not sure it's hard to keep up counting but the thing is he's written so many great songs uh, that people just love to hear his new songs and uh, now that Chris Allman's back in the group Chris Allman also has written some great songs as well. So now they've got two great songwriters in the group. I don't know how Gerald is going to balance it out and keep them from button heads saying, hey, I want my song in the album. No, I want mine. I think Gerald, he's a pretty good manager and I'm pretty sure he'll have everything under control. We've got a birthday party coming up in a couple weeks. People are going to be outside and they're going to want to sit on something nice, not something that looks old, dingy, and dirty. So what we want to do is bring over a little bucket of water Get this sponge wet. You see these? These are looking a little oxidated. So we're going to, first of all, scrub all the dirt off of it. Get it cleaned up. Now, Gerald Wolf is, uh, the, of course, the manager of uh, Greater Vision. And he is arguably the most talented man at Southern Gospel Music. And uh, I dare you to find anybody else who's this talented. 
What a great voice he has as far as singing. Not too many people has the power that he has when it comes to singing. And the other part is when he's MC, he MCs like the great George Yount used to MC. Nobody could MC it better than George Yount. Maybe Hovey Lister, but George Yount is right up there. Well, Gerald Wolf has been able to take what he's learned from George Yount and use the same. On top of all of that, he's also a great piano player. And, and when I say great, I don't just mean he's good. I mean he's actually great at playing the piano. Especially on the recordings when he's, you can always tell when he's playing the piano on his recording. Because it has a certain, I call it the Gerald Wolf style. What a great style. It, it, I call it, it, it's basically pure Southern Gospel. And uh, I really enjoy it. And I dare you to find anybody who's just as talented as Gerald Wolf. You take those three guys, Gerald Wolf, Rodney Griffin, great songwriter, Chris Ullman, one of the greatest tenors of all time, put them together in a group, you've got greater vision. It's hard to beat that kind of a group. Is to take this sander and we're going to sand down the wood. Now, right now, my son has decided to join me. And this is Liam. Say hi, Liam. Hi. <laughs> he likes to help his daddy when daddy's doing work in the backyard. And I like him when he gets to help. So what we want to do is take some of the rough edges off of this bench. We're going to need to sand it down uh, in all sorts of areas. All right. our newspaper all in place and uh, we are ready to start staining now I have picked something called red oak I like the color and uh, the red oak gives it kind of a bright wood look but um, it also gives it a nice dark look and a natural look I don't want something too dark because against this finish the paint on the walls it's just not going to look real good now uh, if, you, if you're on Facebook at all you've been able to see some of the videos that Gerald Wolfe puts on and, uh, and Rodney Griffin. Now, one of the videos that they've recently put on was of the recording of a brand new album. Now, this album does not have a name uh, at the time of this taping, uh, but from what I've heard, uh, it's going to be really good. Chris Allman, of course, is on it, and he's doing a song uh, that uh, you've probably heard before, saying, I know a man who can. Now, I heard this live not too long ago. Uh, at a concert in Antioch. He did that song and it brought the house down. It was incredible. It's just one of those moments that you go to Southern Gospel music concerts for because you know it's going to be incredible. And honestly, I'm looking forward to getting this cut on recording, but more than that, I'm looking forward to seeing them live again. And really, you can't really uh, enjoy Southern Gospel uh, in an album as much as you can when it's live. Live is when Southern Gospel becomes more than just entertainment on a CD. It becomes ministry for the soul, and that's why I love Southern Gospel so much. Wow, would you look at that. Got some great color on that now. It's a nice, nice dark shade. It uh, contrasts from, from the house, but it's not so bold that it makes it look real bad. Now what we want to do also is add a layer of polyurethane to that, so it really brings out the shine. The one thing you don't want to do at this point is sit on it. One, love this group. It's one of my favorite all-time groups. Always will be. And let me tell you, if you like Chris Allman, you ought to hear him on a roller coaster. Well, this is Chris Henry. I am your Southern Gospel Gardener, and thank you for being with us once again on this episode. We'll see you next time.